Hi, glad to be with you this week. Sorry I didn't get you a video last week, but I um, want to talk a little bit about conflict and respond to some of the input I got and give you a resource to think about uh, as you move forward. I want to talk a little bit about this week's conversation about experimenting and then look into our last week and, um, and then we'll be wrapping it up. So thanks for the conversation about the TED Talk and specifically a number of you talked about the idea of laying down the arrows. I find that concept really helpful in just interpersonal relationships, in leadership and parishioner kind of relationships, and just as a concept about um, kind of as we, we learn to talk with people that are different than us. And so thanks for those comments around that. It got me thinking about a book that we're using for one of our courses. It is called The Practice of Adaptive Leadership, and it's an accompaniment by uh, Heifetz and Linsky, and they, they partner with another person, and it's filled with a bunch of tools. If you're interested in doing, in doing deeper stuff, with work with adaptive leadership, I really recommend this book. But the, what I was thinking about conflict, I, I was thinking about their idea about acting politically. And I want to highlight uh, one thing that they said in this book and then give you a tool maybe that might be helpful. They said, by acting politically, we mean using your awareness of the limits of your own authority. I'm aware of that many times. And our awareness of the stakeholder's interest, as well as the power and influence networks in your, in your organization. And you do that to forge alliances with people that will both support your efforts, that will integrate and diffuse uh, opposition, and to give valuable dissenting voices a hearing as you adjust your perspective interventions and mobilize adaptive work. I really liked that idea about what does it mean to give dissenting voices a hearing um, that's really appropriate with regard to that. Well, they give you six guidelines. They talk about um, expand your informal authority, and they talk a little bit about that, and especially among getting on, on the balcony and looking back. They talk about how do we find alliances, not only um, in, in leading the change, but relationally that might be supportive and give us honest feedback. Um, staying connected to the opposition. One of the things I think about conflict is we don't have a deep relationship with them. And so sometimes conflict is, is really hard because there's not that larger in, uh, relationship to put it in. Um, the next one is uh, manage authority figures. Now that may have a variety of places in your setting. If you're the pastoral leader and you're the only person, maybe it's a council or maybe it's the, in, the really the um, matriarch or patriarch in the system. But so there's both that formal and informal. Take responsibility for casualties, knowing that if you're going to lead through change, you're going to have to deal with conflict, but there are going to be people that aren't going to make it through. And lastly, protect and engage the voices of dissent. So what they do is for this, and this is what I'm going to make a copy of for you, they create a worksheet. It looks like this. It's a little chart, and it talks about your allies. Who are they? Why might they be your allies? What's the main objective, and how can these allies best help you successfully implement your intervention or your change? So we've got allies, um, opposition, senior authorities, casualties, and dissenters. So what I want to do is... I want to make a copy of this for you and help you see if that will help you think about how you can work through conflict knowing it might be coming and in a really thoughtful and in a systematic kind of way. So that's the tool I'm going to offer you and hope that that will be helpful. Now this week you're going to talk about in your groups experimenting your way into the future. They have both the, the TED Talk and, and your way to talk about what are some ideas from that that you want to remember as you move into the future. But also we ask you contextually to think about asking people of different generations about their picture of the future with regard to whatever it is you're talking about. So let's say it's about engaging young people and their families. And you talk with some young people and you talk with some parents and you talk with some elderly people about what would be a way that would really, if, if you really saw a vibrant future of how that was working, what would it look like? And then just a chance to reflect, how does their input help you think differently about the case now and as you look to the future? And might there be some moments or some experiments or some 
pilot groups, pilot ways that you can do this to say, hey, how about if for a few weeks we try this or something like that. So those are the exercises that you're going to do for this week. So I hope that you have good engagement and don't forget to give me that feedback. I really appreciate those of you that have done that and, and fed me back into what you've learned. Then the last week is when we're going to talk about what you've learned. And it's the way to look back at each of these things from the first week when you introduced your case study until now and, and share with each other what you've learned with regard to that. I would love to next week join you in those conversations. And I know some of you have adjusted your time or your method for getting together. So if you could loop me in on that um, I, and send me an email or uh, invite me to your Google Hangout, whatever tools you have, that would be great. So enjoy your week and I look forward to hearing uh, and being with you the following week. Thanks.